Okay, so very good. So uh, good morning, everyone. Um, another day of our interesting workshop, and it's my pleasure to announce Gregory Scheer from uh, uh, Sorbonne, and he will talk about non-intersecting Brownian bridges in the flat-to-flat -flat geometry. Please, Gregory. Okay, thank you, Herbert. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, let me first thank the, the organizers, and in particular, Filippo, for, uh, for the invitation here and the organization of this uh, great, uh, great program. Uh, I'm very glad to be here. And uh, today I will talk about uh, non-intersecting Brownian bridges uh, in a particular geometry, which I call flat to flat. Uh, we have heard a lot uh, already about non-intersecting uh, Brownian path or lattice path uh, in the previous, uh, previous talks. And today I would like to take a slightly different perspective and I will show you uh, essentially how to uh, devise a nice uh, way of generating such uh, non-intersecting Brownian bridges and eventually uh, see how these uh, methods of generating path eventually leads also uh, to a nice uh, analytical tools to, to perform computation. So that's, that's, that's the idea. And uh, this is a joint work with uh, my colleague, sorry, my colleague and friend Satya Majumdar. And uh, uh, this part, I mean, large part of the work was done in collaboration with Jacek Grela. Uh, who was a postdoc with us uh, and who is now uh, back in, uh, in Krakow. So let's start with a very, a very simple question uh, and uh, ask how, how can simulate a simple Brownian motion. So this is a very simple, uh, uh, simple problem here because I have a very simple stochastic uh, differential equation and to solve it somehow, uh, I can simply discretize time. We know how to do that. And eventually, <clears throat> I discretize time with a time step delta t, and then in the limit when delta t goes to zero, I will generate nice Brownian, uh, Brownian path. Now, let's go to a slightly more complicated question and now ask how can I generate a path but conditioned uh, to end at a fixed position, say b, at a certain time tf, say. So this is called, uh, this is called a Brownian bridge. And uh, you may uh, wonder how to generate that. Okay, it's not that obvious how to do this because of course, uh, even if you just discretize space and time, then uh, if you do the naive way of generating uh, any path and uh, throwing away all the path that did not terminate at the right point, of course, I mean, this is terribly uh, costful and uh, you, want, uh, you don't want to do that. Well, instead in this case, uh, there was some nice, uh, nice, uh, way to do that. In fact, uh, the question of conditioning stochastic processes uh, is a classical problem in probability theory. Uh, first name probably uh, we have in mind is Doob, but uh, after him, lots of people have worked on that. And in this particular bridge configuration, it turns out that there is a very nice way to generate a Brownian bridge starting from a Brownian motion. Okay, so this is this quite well-known relation here. So X of T here is just a standard Brownian motion. So it just start at given point zero at A, say. And then uh, what you need to, 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 to subtract basically is this, this term here. And you can check that this generates correctly uh, a Brownian bridge. Now this is nice, but you see, uh, you would like, I would like to, to have something which is more like a, an effective uh, Langevin equation for, for this process. That means the equivalent of the XDT equal noise for the Brownian simple Brownian motion, uh, what's the, the equivalent for the bridge configuration, okay? So it turns out that uh, this question was uh, uh, I mean, uh, reconsidered or considered uh, in the physics literature relatively recently uh, in these two papers. Uh, and uh, it turns out that one can write a simple uh, effective Langevin equation for, for the bridge, which is of that type here. So here you just have the standard Brownian, uh, I mean, white noise, if you want. But you see that there is an effective, uh, an effective drift here, which explicitly depends on time, by the way, uh, and also on the final time. Okay, so TF is the final time. And if you then just discretize this, this, this equation, then eventually you will generate uh, the correct, uh, you, you will generate uh, Brownian bridges with the correct statistical weight. So there is a very simple way to derive, to derive this equation here. Uh, I just uh, give the, the, the main steps. So let's, so the main, the main picture, uh, the, the main, the, the, when you consider Brownian bridges, uh, you really need to think of uh, the fact that we are considering here Markov processes. So basically I divide my, uh, so I want to, to compute the probability to be at X at a given time T. So I just divide the, the time interval in zero T and TTF. 
And basically what I do is that I first propagate from zero A to Tx. So that's this first part. This is just a simple Brownian motion here. And then I need from T, I need to go back to, to, to B at Tf. So that's what it is here. And I need to normalize uh, such that this quantity here uh, is a correct uh, probability density, normalized over X. So I have now two, uh, two objects here, which I call P and Q. Uh, they are different because you see that the time actually, uh, the dependence on time is a bit different. This P here is called the backward, uh, the backward, uh, back, back, backward propagator. And it's well known to be just given by this uh, Gaussian, simple Gaussian term. And it satisfies the, the forward Fokker Planck equation. Now the Q here you see is also very similar, but instead is basically that you are looking the dynamics forward in time, okay? And uh, backward in time, sorry. So uh, that means that uh, if you, uh, this Q here is, is, is known uh, as the backward for, uh, propagator and it satisfies uh, this uh, heat equation here with, with a minus sign here, okay? Simply because time has been reversed. Now, if you look at that uh, and this given P, given P and Q, then it's, it's quite simple to derive uh, uh, an equation for, the, for P tilde, which is simply the product of P and Q, okay? Simply using uh, the, the, these, two, these two differential equations. And so you get a kind of effective Fokker-Planck equation. And from it, you can basically infer the corresponding dynamics, okay? So that's, uh, that's very simple in this case because Q uh, is, is very similar. I mean, it's just the same guy. Uh, and uh, the effective equation that you get is basically the one that I showed before. And that's, uh, that's, what, that's how you can discretize these things. So, so it's already quite nice, uh, but what we wanted to, to do is uh, to go a bit beyond that. And uh, the question we ask is whether it's possible to, um, to go beyond a single particle case and, have, and look at uh, collections of interacting particles and see how one can extend these kind of, of techniques. And uh, a natural extension is uh, our preferred non-intersecting uh, Brownian motion, uh, which have this kind of uh, hardcore uh, repulsion. And uh, as we know, I mean, this, uh, uh, this has a very nice applications in math and physics. Uh, uh, I will not, uh, of course, do a, uh, an exhaustive list of that. We have many of, many of us have worked on, on, the, on these models. Um, I think in the math literature, this, uh, this, this whole thing started with the Carlin McGregor paper. Uh, and uh, in physics, uh, probably, as, as far as I know, the first paper that I know is a paper by De Gennes uh, in 1968. And then uh, these, be these models became popular after this uh, review by uh, Michael Fisher. Um, so if I come back to the De Gennes paper, he had typically the, the model that we would like to study. So he wanted, he had basically these uh, polymer models, uh, which are non-intersecting. And these lines here, uh, you can think of it as basically elastic lines if you think about polymers and elastic lines uh, is like Brownian motion. So where X is replaced by T basically. And uh, for some reason, uh, the geometry that he was considering had these non-intersecting uh, constraints. And he was also insisting on looking at the fixed positions on the left and the right. And that typically corresponds to what I would like to study uh, because we typically have here in this case, non-intersecting Brownian bridges. Okay, uh, there are very, uh, I mean, various incarnations of these uh, non-intersecting lines. I mean, here I, I show this very nice picture, but in the context of vicinal surfaces uh, where you cut, uh, you typically cut a, um, a solid uh, along a, a plane, which is almost uh, a symmetry plane, such that you have such terraces, which are very, I mean, one step is just one atom. And if you look at them, that basically uh, these terraces are delimited by these steps and these steps uh, also form uh, non-intersecting lines and people have proposed models uh, connected to these bridges that I want to study. So that's sort of uh, motivation. Now, it turns out that uh, as, I, as we know, this, this is also, uh, uh, these problems uh, are very uh, uh, well known and interesting in the context of combinatorics. And uh, these uh, people here, Bonichon and Mosbar, uh, actually proposed already some, some, some time back, uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, a, a, a way to generate uh, non-intersecting lattice bridges, uh, but where you have discrete, discrete walks, okay? So simply plus minus, plus minus walk. And they used basically formula uh, from uh, combinatorics. Uh, at that time, uh, there were just uh, uh, paper by uh, Kratten Teller and, and collaborators. Uh, uh, and basically they, they used uh, a kind of brute force way 
uh, the, 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 the propagator between one configuration to another at time between time t and time t plus one to build these bridges. But uh, again, uh, this is just in discrete time. And also it's a, you know, rather, uh, I mean, it's, 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 it turns out to be rather limited, but, but these questions you see uh, has been, uh, I mean, is also relevant in this context. So what I want to consider here uh, is uh, uh, our models, which are both continuous in, in space and time. And uh, so these are these, uh, these non-intersecting lines here. They will start from uh, AIs and end up at BIs at time TF. And what I call flat to flat geometry um, is uh, a specific case where uh, the, 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 the AIs are basically uniformly distributed, okay? So the, 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 they are just uh, given by this expression here. And I want to understand how to generate these things, okay? So uh, this is the first question that, that I want to ask is uh, how do I generate such configurations? Uh, and the second question is, uh, can I do some quantitative study of that? For instance, the, the most natural thing to study is if I look at the, 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 the given time t, what's the density of particles that I had? And you will see that it's, it's actually a quite non-trivial question, which turns out to be related to a, a nice uh, problems uh, in random matrix theory. So there is in fact a well-known case where all the AIs and BIs are zero, and this is known under the case of what, this is what, what people call water melon. And in this case, uh, so this is what I plotted here. And if you look at a given time t, uh, it is well known that in this case, if you look at the joint distribution, well, uh, they are exactly given up to a with scale factor. They are exactly given by the, 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 the distribution of the GUE uh, random matrix ensemble, okay? So that means that uh, essentially the, 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 the positions uh, they, of, of these uh, random workers, they, of the Brownian motions, they behave like the eigenvalues of a GUE. And in fact, uh, you have more than that. Uh, it turns out that you can uh, uh, generate uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this density, so we did this uh, configurations uh, via uh, dynamics on uh, random matrices, which, which I will come to. But before that, uh, it's clear that uh, if I am, since I want to consider questions related to the density, well, in this case, since at all time we have a GUE, then obviously in the large end limit at all time will be given by uh, a semicircle law. And the only thing that changes is the width of this, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, semicircle, okay? But at any time t, you will have an exact semicircle in the large end limit. So how to generate that? Well, there is, it's well known that uh, you can just uh, put, uh, you, you take a Hermitian matrix n times n, and inside of it, uh, you put uh, random bridges, okay? So Brownian bridges, both for the real and complex part, and all of them are independent. Of course, you have to respect the, the emission property. And then if you do that, uh, if you run your dynamics, uh, what you can show is that uh, if you look at the, 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 so these are the positions of your workers, the lambda i's are the eigenvalues of your, your random matrices. And this, these two processes actually do coincide. That means that you can gen generate this configuration here by simply uh, diagonalizing at each time step uh, your, your random matrix here. So that's a very convenient way to do that. And this is, uh, this is called in a random matrix uh, language, this is a special instance of a Dyson's Brownian bridge. Okay, so Dyson's Brownian motion generically is the, 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 the time dependent uh, or the dynamics of the eigenvalues of a time dependent uh, Hermitian matrix. And here I have a special instance of bridges since all the eigenvalues start at zero and end up at zero at a fixed time. Great. So now uh, the question is, uh, can one generalize this uh, and eventually make some connection to Dyson's Brownian motion uh, for more general uh, bridges? That means going beyond this very simple uh, initial condition where all the workers start and end at the same point. So that's what, uh, that's what we did. And basically uh, let me summarize this and how we did that. So, uh, I call these configurations here, I call them vicious, vicious Brownian bridges. Vicious means non-intersecting is just shorter. This was introduced by, 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 by Fisher, the name, but I will use it here. So vicious means non-intersecting. Uh, so from this vicious Brownian bridge, I want to show you that uh, there is actually a very direct and precise connection to the Dyson Brownian motion, uh, Brownian bridge motion for, for beta equals two. Uh, then from that, uh, Starting from that, I will be able to derive an explicit Langevin equation for the eigenvalues, exactly 
uh, in the same way I did for the single uh, bridge, but this time taking into account uh, this non-crossing uh, non condition. And what is quite nice is that uh, once I will have that, well, first this will provide, uh, this will provide us uh, with a very efficient numerical way of generating this vicious Brian bridge by simply solving uh, uh, Langevin equation, basically. And on the other hand, as we will see, uh, this also uh, gives us a tool uh, to do computations, and I will illustrate it on the, the, the exact computation of the density for this, uh, for this model. So just to show you, uh, this is typically what uh, we can generate. Uh, so you see this, uh, this uh, non-intersecting uh, path here. They all start with the uniform uh, condition as we have. Uh, and uh, what you see is that it seems that in the large end limit, uh, this uh, sort of uh, leads to a limiting shape. Uh, and this limiting shape, in fact, uh, uh, one can compute it explicitly. Uh, that's a compli relatively complicated expression, but fully explicit. Uh, I will show you how one can get that. And that we can more than this. Uh, so this basically lambda minus, lambda plus are, will be just the, the, the support of, the, of the, the density at a given fixed time t. And uh, we will be able basically to compute this density. Now it turns out that if I look at exactly at the middle point, it, we will see that it's, it's a special point. It's a symmetry point here, and it's also quite special. Uh, this was actually uh, studied before in the context of string theory by Marcos Marino. Uh, and then more recently by Peter Forrester in a, in a slightly different context. Uh, and what we are able to do is basically to compute uh, this density uh, for any time t now, and uh, in particular for some uh, rational uh, values of the ratio t by tf, like two thirds, three quarter. They have some nice explicit expressions. And of course, in all these cases, uh, they are different from the Wigner semicircle. They may look superficially like that, but of course their explicit expressions are pretty much different. Okay, so I will just start with this, uh, showing uh, with this uh, connection between the vicious Brian bridge to the effective Langevin equation. And then I will show you how one can get uh, information from this effective Langevin equation, um, essentially by uh, studying uh, Berger's equation, which arises in this, in this case. Okay, so let's, let, let's move on uh, and let's establish or rec recall somehow uh, the more precise connection that there exists between the vicious Brownian motion on the left-hand side here, okay? So here I have just uh, uh, Brownian motions, which are essentially, I mean, their dynamics is, is just evolved uh, independently from with, with this noise, but they are condi conditioned on the fact that uh, they are not crossing. So here I'm looking at Brownian motion, okay? Forget about the bridge condition for a while. I just focus on the, on the Brownian motion. Now, on the other hand, uh, we have this process of the dyson brownian motion, DBM, uh, which uh, for a given beta, where beta is the Dyson index, has this, uh, this, uh, this equation here. So of course, uh, what is the main difference, striking difference between the two is that here you see that we have this uh, non-trivial uh, interacting terms. But what is nice and what will be nice for us is that if, when beta uh, is uh, greater or equal than one, and we will be mainly interested in beta equals two, it turns out that because of this repulsive interaction term, uh, it turns out that the, 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 the eigenvalues will not cross with probability one. So somehow this interaction term takes into account automatically the non-crossing the non -crossing condition, which is very convenient because uh, it's very hard to do that here. Uh, but because of this interacting term here, uh, you, 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 you have it for free if you want. Now, it's also well known uh, that there is a, 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 a direct a connection between the propagator of the vicious Brownian motion and the Dyson Brownian motion uh, in the special case where beta equals to two, okay? And uh, this expression I think is well known. I think maybe I, I know that Johansson gives this expression. He refers to another paper by Brezin and Meta, sorry, by Brezin and, uh, Brezin and uh, Ikami. Uh, there are various ways to derive this, uh, this, uh, the, this, this identity. I mean, we had also one way to do that uh, with my student Rambo, uh, which amounted to basically write the, the Fokker-Planck equation of the two guys and check that uh, and, and obtain this, this nice relation. But that gives you a very simple uh, expression here where delta is simply the van der Monde. And uh, with that, uh, you will see that we can easily uh, compute now what happens for a bridge. Okay, so now I'm looking at the bridge. So I start from AIs, but now I want to end up at BIs, okay? So again, 
I will use the fact that I have a Markov process. And so I will decompose the trajectories between zero T and T to TF, okay? And I will, I, I'm just doing the same thing, okay? So yeah, maybe uh, there is something that I have, I should say right now. Um, this correspondence, um, yeah, maybe, yeah, sorry, let me go back to that. Uh, I want to stress it. I mentioned that beta is equal to two. Uh, you have also to see that D is actually one over two N. Okay, so the, 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 to have this connection, the, 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 the diffusion coefficient uh, has to be scaled with one over N. And that's, that's quite important because you have to remember here that the difference between the AIs is also of order one over N. And uh, of course, if I don't scale D, I mean, uh, if I take the AI to be just one over N, then that will be just the vicious, I mean, the standard uh, watermelons. Uh, but because of the scaling, uh, things, things will be different. Okay, so that's, that's important to keep this in mind. So I have that, exactly the same thing that I explained before for the single particle. But now I can uh, use the fact that uh, this guy here for the Brownian motion is also related to the, to the, to the Brownian, to the Dyson Brownian motion, okay? So I can just use for each of them, the relation with the propagator for the Dyson Brownian motion, okay? But now when you see that, I mean, it's quite nice. I mean, because okay, many guys actually do cancels uh, and eventually what you get is simply this product there of the two propagators divided by the normalization. And that's precisely the propagator of the Dyson Brownian bridge with beta equals, okay? So that means that uh, uh, we have uh, clearly a nice identity between the two. So if I am able to derive that, this is true for any A and B, by the way, huh? uh, then I will be able to, uh, to, to, to have this, okay? So that's, that's what I want to use is that the, 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 uh, the, the vicious Brownian bridge that I want to generate eventually are exactly the same as this one. Now, this one is nicer because I, can, I know I can start from, a, from, a, from the Dyson's uh, Brownian equation, Dyson's Brownian motion equation, okay? So the idea uh, is basically to write an effective Langevin equation for these quantities. So how do you do that? Well, you just do exactly the same as I, as I showed you before. Uh, I just uh, write uh, the explicit Fokker-Planck equation for P and Q. This is, I have a Langevin equation to start with. So that's quite, pretty easy uh, to, 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 to write it. And uh, as, I, as we did before, I will then write an effective Fokker-Planck equation for the product. I will not do all the details because it's a little bit uh, cumbersome. But at the end of the day, uh, in this case, for this flat initial condition, you will see why in a minute, uh, it turns out that, uh, that the, 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 the equation simplifies a lot. Uh, why is it so? Well, basically, uh, I want to use then that uh, for this, uh, I can compute these propagators basically uh, by using, uh, by using uh, a Carlin-McGregor formula. And the Carlin-McGregor formula in the case where the BIs has this nice form becomes nicer because the determinant turns out to become essentially van der Mond determinant. Uh, and in this case, uh, you can uh, read off uh, a nice Fokker-Planck equation for Petilda uh, infer the dynamics. And the dynamics that you get uh, is, is the one that I write here, okay? So it's a little bit of computation, but it's exact at this stage. And it's exact for any, uh, any initial condition A, but for BIs which are of that form. So that's already nice because this, give us, this gives us uh, a nice way to generate uh, our, our bridges, uh, non-intersecting Brownian bridges. Uh, because first, uh, it automatically ensures the final flat configuration. I mean, this, okay, this is inbuilt somehow. And also because of this term here, uh, we have the non-crossing non condition. So that's the first part of, of, of what, what we wanted to do is that now we have uh, a nice, you just have to discretize this in time. You put it on your computer and you can generate uh, easily uh, nice configurations such as these ones. Okay, that's very simple. Great, so now uh, it's nice. Uh, this allows to show a nice picture, but now you would like also to, uh, to maybe to, 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 go, to go a bit beyond and, and have uh, a more quantitative uh, understanding of, of, this, of the density profiles of these of this, uh, uh, bridges. And uh, maybe I can just give you a little bit of motivation. It turns out that uh, this question is related to uh, interesting questions uh, in general in, in, in RMT. So let's come back to that formula that I showed you before, uh, which is this, uh, the propagator of the vicious Brownian bridge. Now, here I have the vicious Brownian motion. Okay, so these are just non-intersecting Brownian motion. 
So in this case, we know that the, 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 these, these guys here, you see, uh, they can just be written in terms of the determinants using the, 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 the simple Carlin McGregor formula. Okay. So as I said before, you see that now if the AIs and BIs are just I minus one by N or linear in I, if you want, you see that when you expand the square here, uh, the, the non-trivial term is a term is, 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 the, is the cross term, which couples lambda I and AJ. And this guy now is, comes to the power I, okay? So that means that uh, these are simply van der Mond determinants and you can evaluate them, uh, manipulate them. And eventually uh, you get, you get this, nice, uh, this nice formula here. Now, these ones here actually can be uh, written as determinants. Uh, what is interesting to notice uh, is that you see that these are two determinants here, which are, which are different, okay? Uh, one is basically T here, while you have TF minus T there. The only point where they do coincide is precisely TF equal half. So TF equal half would correspond to a standard determinantal point process. But in general, uh, what you have uh, is that you have a biorthogonal structure uh, for, this, for this joint distribution. And that makes the, 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 comp the, the computation much, much more difficult. In fact, in this case, we know that it's usually difficult to obtain any uh, exact formula uh, for the densities. Now it turns out I will not have time, but uh, uh, this turns out to be related to, to Chan Simon's model, and actually Marie Marcos Marino has a series of papers on, on these models. But eventually, the only case that they were able to compute is again this TF by two, uh, and this was revisited after after that in the context of what is known by biorthogonal stiges weigert polynomials, um, which you might have heard about. So uh, it's so you, we have this biorthogonal structure, and in fact uh, we can uh, also transform it uh, in terms of what is known under the name of the mutalib borodin ensemble in RMT. Uh, and this change of, if to do that, you have to perform this change of variable, which will turn out to be quite useful for us. So essentially, uh, it's, it's, it's quite non-trivial to see, but okay, if, if you just, so tau is, is, is theta, sorry, is the equivalent of time. And xi is basically the exponential of, of lambda i's. And if you do that, and if you rewrite this, uh, this distribution in terms of these variables, well, now you have something uh, which you probably, uh, many of you have heard, uh, or have, or have seen before. Uh, so you indeed have two uh, van der Mond determinants here, uh, but uh, in general, they come uh, with uh, two different uh, parameter theta here. So this is the, the, the parameter one, one over theta for this uh, Mutalibor din ensemble. And uh, this has been uh, studied quite, quite a bit, in fact, uh, in the, uh, in the um, RMT literature. I just mentioned here a couple of papers by Tom Clays, but uh, uh, Kujlars also have a series of papers on that. Uh, um, I'm sure I'm, I'm forgetting uh, other uh, reference there. There is one peculiar case here, which uh, in fact was not studied before, is that if when you do this transformation, you see that the confining potential that you get Okay, in the large end limit, only this term will contribute, but it's a log square term. Okay, so it's a, it's a kind of borderline, uh, borderline case. Um, but we will see that still uh, we have uh, a density with a finite support, which we can eventually get explicitly. Okay, so uh, this was also studied. Uh, in fact, uh, this was also studied uh, by uh, Katori and by, by Takashi and, and Katori. Uh, which derives some exact result for this model, but the, the Argent analysis is extremely hard to do. Uh, here I just show you the plots. So th this is their formula, uh, which have these oscillations uh, for different times. And the, the red line is our exact large end limit. Uh, so you see that, okay, everything seems to work very well. Okay, so what we want to do is how, how do I get this, this density profile? Okay, is it, uh, how can I get that? So as I said, Tf equal half is a special case because it's a simple, uh, it has a simple uh, orthogonal structure uh, which, which has been studied in the past. And what we are able to do is basically to compute that uh, for any time t. So let me just sketch uh, how we do that. So this is our, uh, starting Langevin equation, okay? But it's, it looks a bit ugly. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's not very nice to, 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 to try to work with that. Uh, but instead, if we use this mapping to the, at the end, it's better to think in terms of this mutali borodin ensemble where uh, you, 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 write, you work with the XI 
And what you get is actually a quite nicer, uh, nicer expression here. Uh, the price that you have to pay now is that the noise becomes multiplicative. Okay. But still, uh, it's, it's nicer. And as you will see, we can, we can make progress there. So how do we make progress there? Well, we want to get the density. Uh, so ideally, we would like to have it in terms of the, the variable lambdas. But as I said, it's better to get in the terms of x size. So I want to get this. I'm using this uh, physicist notation for the density. And once I know this uh, rho n of x, well, uh, oops, sorry. When I guess when I get this uh, this density for x, well, I can just simply relate it to rho lambda via this uh, a bit cumbersome uh, manip I mean uh, relation, but 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 fully explicit. So what I want to get is at the end of the day is this quantity, right? So what we are going to do here, as we usually do in, in this context uh, when studying Brownian motion, is to get the density from the resolvent, okay? And write uh, an explicit equation uh, for, for the resolvent or the Green's function. Now again, this is something that people had done for the standard uh, Brownian motion, uh, standard, sorry, Dyson's Brownian motion, but of course here it's, it's, it's a bit more complicated. And so you need to, to, to find the, the good set of variable to work. And eventually, this is the good object that, that you want to, to, to work with. And uh, at the end, as I said, I mean, you can just simply get the density from the, from the standard relation. Okay. Now, the nice, uh, the nice thing is that uh, you can write, uh, I will not show you the details, but you can write uh, uh, an explicit uh, expression for this quantity, which is valid for finite n, and then you can study its large n, its large n limit. And what you can show, and what we show there, is that in the large n limit, uh, this object, which is a resolvent in the appropriate set of variables, it's, uh, it reaches uh, a nice uh, large n stationary limit, if you want. Uh, so you have to remember that theta, theta is basically the time, and y is, is more like the position. Okay? And uh, what you can, uh, what, you, what, you, what, what, you, what you show is that uh, this J here actually uh, satisfies this, this equation in the large n limit, which is simply the, uh, the, 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 the inviscid uh, Burgers equation, uh, which you are happy with because uh, you know that you will be able to solve it via the method of characteristics, basically. So in principle, now everything is contained in this, uh, in this equation, okay? Now, of course, as we know, uh, what uh, plays a crucial role is, is, the initial, uh, is the initial condition here. And at this stage, so you can write something which is valid for any AIs. Now, again, it turns out that if the AIs are also equispaced, uh, this becomes simpler to analyze. And at the end of the day, this is a case where we can have more uh, solution. But in principle, this is valid for any arbitrary uh, initial condition here. Yeah, so I just want to mention, as I said, uh, this kind of analysis uh, has been carried out by several groups. I think the first that I know were Blaiseau and Novak. Uh, then this was pushed forward by uh, Alès, Bouchot, Guillonet, uh, and then again, Blaiseau. Uh, more recently, uh, people have reconsidered uh, this, uh, this kind of, uh, of analysis. For instance, I mentioned here this nice paper by Pierre, uh, Alex Krajenbrink, and, and Nilo Kona. Um, so that's uh, uh, the difference here is that the, the, the equation that we started with actually was, was quite different, uh, but nevertheless, there is yet uh, an underlying Burgers equation behind. And uh, again, uh, you can solve this. Uh, and this is uh, the, 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 most, more, the most explicit expression that we can get is the following is that, so what, what you are after is really this function g of y theta. And okay, the good, the good, the good <laughs> quantity is actually exponential of minus j, which I call h. And h, this is our final result. H actually satisfies this uh, this, this this nice equation here. Okay. So in general, of course, it's it's pretty hard to uh, to to solve. But you see that for uh, some specific values of theta, for when theta equals one, two, and three, typically. Uh, well, you can actually solve uh, explicitly these uh, these uh, these quantities. But otherwise. You can already get many things from it, the cumulants, everything, I mean, the, the, the moments, uh, and lot, 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 lots of information can, can, be, can, can be obtained from that. And uh, in particular, uh, you can also have access uh, directly, uh, although the, the computation is not so, 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 so easy, but, but, but you can get the, 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 the boundaries.
explicitly from this from this approach. And as I said, uh, for special values of theta, two, three, and four, then we have uh, this. This actually pops up to be a, uh, an equation which can be solved explicitly, and from it. Uh, okay, you have to work a bit, but uh, nevertheless, uh, you can write explicitly the, 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 the density profiles, as I showed before. Okay, so let me just uh, make a brief summary of, of, of what we did. Uh, so we first did this, uh, this mapping uh, to, to non-intersecting non Brownian bridges uh, to the uh, Dyson Brownian bridges. And the main advantage of that, again, is that uh, the interaction term that you have uh, in the Dyson Brownian motion uh, takes naturally into account this non intersecting condition, at least for the parameter beta equals two, which is of interest here. And then from that, for, for, from this, uh, we were able to, to, uh, uh, to find a, a nice a numerical and simple uh, efficient method actually to, uh, to generate Dyson Brownian bridges uh, via an effective Langevin dynamics, which is then very simple to solve. And uh, you can. Uh, get many things out of it. Uh, let me just mention that uh, with uh, my student, Benjamin De Bruyne, we, we made uh, okay, recently uh, uh, an extension to, to, to these kind of ideas to a discrete time processes where you can, similar ideas can be, uh, can be, uh, can be applied. And then uh, what I like here is that uh, we, we devised a, a, a nice uh, numerical method, but in fact, this, which is this effective Langevin equation, but on the other hand, this Langevin equation is also gives you, provides you a nice uh, analytical tool to, to, to compute things. So here I illustrated this uh, on the density, but uh, in principle, other quantities, uh, other observables could be, uh, could, could be computed with this method. And let me just mention that, okay, we hope to also generate, to, to extend this uh, to other type of uh, processes, other type of models, for instance. This was recently done by uh, Satya Majumdar and, and Pierre Merny, uh, where they studied this kind of, of uh, of methods, so extended this kind of method to the deformed GOE, uh, GOE model. Um, and uh, I guess with that, uh, I will uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Gregory, for an interesting talk. So there are questions. Philippe is the first one. Um, can you also treat the case of a <clears throat> distribution of endpoints B, for instance, which you fix by a function? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, so you want <clears throat> so you want to get the, the, the joint distribution. Yeah, so basically, uh, joint distribution was uh, okay. Let me check if I understood your question. Uh, you can get it indeed via this product of two. Uh, Roughly, yeah, this is more or less that, right? So this is your starting point. So if I look at a given time T, um, so you see T enters here and there, that's the positions of your, of your vicious Brownian bridge indeed, yeah. The point is that uh, doing some large end analysis with that is, 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 is not so easy directly from that. Uh, the reason is that, uh, again, you, you have two, so it has a bi-orthogonal structure, right? So you can, this is not, this was not your question. What I meant is the B. Oh, the sorry. B this formula, you, you've taken a very specific oh, yeah, yeah. situation sorry, in which they are yeah, all yeah, yeah, occupied okay. things. Okay, I mean. So if you want to distribute yeah, this yeah. B. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, so, uh, yes, okay, in principle, yes. Uh, but what you need to, you, uh, it would be better if this uh, is this, uh, um, is this if this Carlin McGregor determinant uh, has some nice uh, some nice structure? But if this is the case, in, I mean, in principle, it's the the, the 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 whole the whole thing goes through. Now the question is, at some point, you you will be happy to compute this determinant in a nice way. If you have a sufficiently nice expression for this determinant, then this might be useful. Okay. Okay. And so it is a nonsense to some kind of problem and then it's I see. You mean you have nice expressions for this? Yeah, then 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 in principle this should be the okay. okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now that yeah, that, that would be a sort of I mean the technology is there. I mean it, it, it will go through. Yeah, that would be happy to discuss. Okay, so other questions? Yes, 
Let's get the microphone. <clears throat> Could I ask about like numerical perspective? So how fast is your sampler working? Can you comment on that? Like if you have like N bridges and you want to discretize at the time increment one over N, so how, how many numerical operations do you need to, for your sampler? Okay, I mean, I would, I would not be able to, to, to answer precisely, uh, but what I can tell is that uh, we could go easily up to uh, N equal uh, 100 or 200 on, a, on, on, on the laptop, I mean, and uh, so that's, that, that's uh, we, they are very, I mean, from that perspective, uh, uh, the qualitative answer is that they are very fast. Uh, it's possible in principle to, 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 to ask, I mean, to, to do a more quantitative analysis, which we have not done. Um, why do you ask this question? Okay. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I see, no, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's, that's uh, yeah, from that perspective, yeah, sure, it's, uh, okay, we, we, we have not thought about this, but yeah, you're right, it's in, yeah, yeah, good point. Um, so I remember some years ago, there was quite a, a bit of work on, on problems like this, but discretized on a lattice, where typically your walkers would be like dike paths, uh, constraint to avoid each other and I was wondering if uh, if uh, your results are comparable I mean taking the continuum limit of the discretized version is it going to give you the continuum version yeah okay so the the only case that I know well I mean the, the, the where that where I can compare things is the case of the uh, the one that I mentioned initially I mean where uh, you, you you converge I mean where the, the discrete setting converge to the uh, to the case where everyone collapses on the same point and there, okay, you can clearly show that the two things are the same, and this has been shown even rigorously. Um, for more general setting, I don't think that people have studied it in detail, but na my naive answer would be yes, that should, that should give the, the, the same. The same uh, the, the well, I can't give precise references, but I remember something of determinant formulas for uh, the kind of things that are similar to what you, you study. Yeah, so I don't know. I mean, yeah, the, 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 the formula that I had in mind, at least, were, I mean, by uh, Kratten Teller, you know, and yes, exactly. Those, okay, those so they, they indeed, indeed do, do, uh, do converge to, to what people have afterwards computed directly in the continuum limit for these cases that I know. I see. Okay, so part B of my question is um, those people, they consider both vicious walkers and friendly walkers. So friendly walkers. They can get uh, they are allowed to follow each other a bit like friends and then they get apart so they don't cross but they they can follow each other okay, okay. and i was wondering if if that makes a difference i think in the lattice model it makes some subtle differences okay. i think that in the continuum limit this should not this should not matter too much but uh or maybe you have to scale things in a specific way such that it matters but yeah exactly yeah i think <laughs> I mean, if okay, they, they probably need to, to be very friendly. I mean, to uh, to, mm. to 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 make a difference. Yeah. And if so there are maybe some interesting <laughs> scaling limits, but uh, if you don't do anything, yeah. And if you allow me one last question, uh, can you condition the lowest walker uh, to be non-negative? Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, so again, here, this is, uh, the, in principle, this is possible. Uh, the problem that I see is that uh, if you now, again, back to this step of uh, evaluating the, the, by, yeah, the Carlin McGregor formula, uh, they are more complicated because of, the, of, this, of these boundaries, right? It's like you impose all of them to be uh, above a certain line, for instance, a certain level, okay? So this is, I mean, again, in, in fact, this is, uh, doable uh, but the question is how do you manage this this determinant i mean is it uh, can you do something out of it i know that the expressions that you get for for brian and brian motions are not so 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 friendly to use but yeah yeah for one yes but uh, if you want all of them to be uh, it's it's a kind of generalization of a reflection principle but uh, embedded in this uh, in this determinant so uh, you will have more complicated expressions. In principle, you can write it, 
uh, you can write this, this Langevin equation, this effective Langevin equation, but basically the, the backward for propagator which enters is, will be harder to compute. Okay. And maybe the large end limit then will be hard, but this is interesting, I think. Probably similar question. Can you condition your your configurations to avoid a certain intervals in the middle? Uh, yeah, this is even more complicated, actually. Uh, yeah, this is even more complicated because, uh, okay, in the question that, uh, yeah, okay, you, you can, okay, in principle, you, you, I guess you could stay still. Yeah, I, I know. I, th I think it's 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 more complicated. <laughs> no, because here, uh, I mean, in the question that uh, Jesper was uh, was asking, okay, I mean, uh, you at any time t, basically, you want to uh, to have them be below a certain point. But now, if you insist on having, uh, yeah, then then it will be more complicated. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that probably. Uh, I mean, sure, surely. Yeah. Question. Uh, do, do, do you have any phase transition space for Simon? Uh, <clears throat> not that I know. Uh, not that I know. Yeah, uh, we were looking for it, but uh, uh, okay. At least uh, for, for this set of initial conditions, uh, there, 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 there's nothing. I don't know. I mean, maybe if if you start to do, I mean, the, the kind of things that you have been studying. I mean, if you start to. Uh, have two, I mean, two blocks, for instance, at the end. I mean, if you force uh, uh, and with, with uh, say, at the end, an interval, and maybe you, you, you can get something, I mean, a bit similar to, uh, uh, to what people have seen uh, in, 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 in the RMT. Uh, but I guess you have, you have to, to consider a slightly more complicated uh, uh, initial condition. But my guess is that if you do that, you should see some signature of this, yes, yeah. So some time ago, I mean, there was some interest in doing what people call the the two watermelon problem, right? I mean, you have n half particles yeah. at one point, and then the other n half at the other point, and they are sort of microscopically yeah. separated. I mean, did you ever try to to apply your kind of techniques to that case? Uh, I guess, I guess so. I mean, I guess so. At least for the okay. So this method, I mean, at the end, I think so. It's I, I think it's it's doable. At least for for the I mean the numerical perspective this should be doable then if you really want to compute things of course i mean uh, one thing that uh, you see here it's it's nice with at least with this uh, method that i that i explained a bit uh, you can then have access to global observables uh, now if you start to, to look at uh, i mean people were looking at especially the case where i mean they, they were very close to each other and then you have some non-trivial local statistics of course, at the moment, I don't know whether one can extend this to, 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 to have something about the local statistics, but at least from the, say, computational point of view, this should be doable. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Well, so that's not the case. So let's thank Gregory okay, thank again. And we need a quarter to